Okay, so we need to uh, tap two, uh, two five sixteenths, eighteen holes into this part. Um, three eighths from one edge and eleven sixteenths from the other. So let's uh, throw the part in here and. I always keep my edge finder right on the edge of the vise with an easy reach. So we got to pick up a couple edges. Let's get it out of back here. We're not going to need to run it that slow anymore. So let's pick up the left hand side of the part first. I'm not going to bother showing you the reader, the digital readout, because we've been this, been here before. Let's just touch the edge of the part, move over half the diameter of the uh, edge finder. Okay, now we'll do the same thing on the front edge. I'm just going to use the vice jaw because I can't reach the front edge of the part. Same difference. It's offset in a different direction. Touch it. Zero out. Offset. Uh, half diameter of the cutter, that puts us right on the edge. So now we're at zero zeros in the lower left corner. We have to move over three-eighths of an inch on the x-axis. And 688 on the y. Alright, since the next hole is located off the first, I'm going to zero out my readout. So, onto the hole location here. Take the edge finder out. Switch over to a drill. This is a letter F drill. You look up on your uh, tap chart, tap and drill, tap drill chart. You'll see a 5 16 18 tap takes a letter F, 257 diameter. That gives you 75% thread. You, you can get by with a quarter inch, which is 250. It's going to give you a little more thread. So it might be a little harder to get the tap through, but I happen to have a letter F on hand, so that's the one I'm going to use. Cutting in steel here, so I'm going to use some uh, cutting oil. The next hole is uh, 875 over. Let's move over from our 00, zero reference point. 875. All right, looks like the battery ran out, so I'm not sure exactly where it ran out. Um, so if you missed part of that uh, tapping routine, there's, there is a video on power tapping. You can view it there. I'm not going to remake the part so I can show it to you again. You can check out that other video if you need to see it. So let's just knock the burrs off these tapped holes and all that's left is to uh, cut this, uh, this uh, 200,000 steep by 875 wide slot. So let's go ahead and set up and do that. Let me grab another, another parallel. So now I know some hammering on a finished edge now, so I switched to a plastic hammer. So let's just hammer it down and we'll throw the uh, edge finder in. Let's 
center up on the cart. Okay, this, this slot is 375 from the left edge here, so let's center it on that and move over 375 plus half a 7 eighths, that's uh, what, uh, 13 sixteenths, is that right? It's getting kind of late, so I'm going to use the calculator just to be sure. Yep, 13 sixteenths, so the center. Whenever I mill a slot like this, I always, you know, I always work from the center and then uh, offset the cutter each direction to get to the width. So set up on the center of the slot, which is 13 sixteenths from the edge of the cut. 8125 right there. Zero out the readout. And let's go ahead and throw a cutter in here. Got a uh, 5 8 hand mill. We use that to mill this 7 8 Diameter is 5 8 so let's figure out the uh, proper RPM here. Four times the cutting speed. Cutting speed of steel is 100. Four times is 400 divided by 0.625. Our RPM should be about 640. Is that right? Yep, about 640. Okay. Right about there. Now let's just run the end mill down until it touches. Doing this to uh, let me touch it off here. Okay, right there. Set my dial to zero. You're doing this to a part where you don't want to leave a mark like this. So you can put a piece of paper in there and touch the paper, and then move up the thickness of the paper. Okay. But I don't care in this case if it scratches the surface because it's going to be milled out anyway. So now let's set the depth. Uh, this notch has to be 200 thousandths deep so I'm gonna raise raise my table up 200 thousandths less 10 for a finished cut all right so let's rough it out I'm gonna plunge mill it just like I did on the body because this is the easiest Easiest way to use an end mill is the least, the least amount of wear on an end mill. You can rough out a plunge mill in there so you can finish up side mill. Save your, save your end mill for the, for the finished side mill cuts. Alright, so that roughs out the center. Now let's, let's figure out how much we have to move in each direction. We have roughly a 5 8 wide slot there. We need to go to 7 8 So that's a uh, well, let's work it out here. I know what it is, but let's let's do it anyway. 0.875 minus the cutter width, which is 2, 7, 2, 625. Means we have 250 thousandths worth of stock to take off yet, or 125 each direction. So let's go do that. Let's move off, uh, say, 115. Okay, then we'll go 115 the other direction. Walk that out. Okay, now we'll go ahead and we'll take it down to full depth. 
Now we're 200 thousandths. Um, offset the full 125. I'm going to do this other side first. I'm going to climb mill it. And I can do that on here. If you're using a light mill or something like that, be really careful climb milling. I'm going to drag the, drag the locks on your table so nothing can grab and get pulled into the cutter. Okay, 125 the other direction. And that part is done. This is the air compressor turned down. Alright. All I have left to do is deburr it. Okay. And uh, next part we'll do is the last part, which is the, the thimble. So I'll see you then.